Fascinating Fossils, The Lepidodendron Tree by Dennis M. Morrison Sr. Ours is indeed a beautiful world, and looking around, I think two of God's favorite colors must have been green and blue. The woodlands and jungles are rich with every shade of green imaginable, and before the great flood of Noah's day, the jungles were even more luxuriant and dense than the rainforests of today, and indeed covered most of the planet, or at least that part that wasn't covered by water. The fossil record, most of which was laid down during the flood, shows a vast array of plants and animals which have become extinct. And when you consider all those ex extinct life forms, and you couple those with those that are still with us today, well, it boggles the mind. I mean the sheer creative genius of God our Heavenly Father, the God of the Bible, the true and living Word. One of the uh, really amazing plants of ancient times was the Lepodendron tree, or scale tree. The remains of this tree are abundant in the fossil record around the world, and I found some pretty special specimens right here in Saginaw, Michigan, where I live. At the close of the 1800s, coal mining was a major industry here, and to get to the coal, miners had to go through layers of shale in shades of salmon gray and black. That shale and some of the coal are prolific in fossil impressions of plant life that science says is some 320 million years old and from a period named the Carboniferous Age. During this time, Saginaw, Michigan was much further south, near the equator, and the plant life was quite tropical. One of the most prolific growers is the Lepidodendron, or scale tree, and I have found, as I said, some amazing specimens here and of its bark and the bark is quite distinctive. The Lepidodendron is an extinct genus of primitive vascular arborescent plant related to the lyco lycopsids or club mosses. They frequently reached heights of 100 feet with trunks over 3.3 feet in diameter. This tree had tall, thick trunks that seldom branched but were bifurcating branches bearing clusters of leaves. These leaves were long and narrow looking, very much like large blades of grass. These were arranged spirally around the top. The fossil impressions are very distinct and difficult to miss. There are tightly packed diamond shaped leaf scars left on the trunk and stems as the plant grew um, to provide the mo one of the most interesting and common of fossils from that carboniferous shale. The fossils look much like a tire track or alligator skin. Interestingly, the scars, or leaf cushions, were composed of green photosynthetic tissues, evidenced by the cuticle covering and being dotted with stomata, microscopic pores through which carbon dioxide from the air diffuses into the plants. Likewise, the trunks would have been green, unlike modern trees, which have scaly, non-photosynthetic brown or gray bark. The scale tree has been likened to a great giant herb. The trunks produced very little wood, being that they were mostly soft tissue. Most of the tree's support came from the thick bark-like region. This region remained around the trunk, but did not flake and fall off like that of most modern trees. As they grew, the leaf cushions expanded to accommodate the increasing width of the trunk. The Lepidodendron seems to have lived in the wettest areas of the coal swamps that existed, again, in the Carboniferous era. era. <clears throat> they grew in dense stands, likely having as many as 1,000 to 2,000 giant club mosses per hectare. This was possible because they did not branch until they were fully grown. Much of their lives were spent as unbranched poles. Reproduction in the scale tree, interestingly, was made possible by the branches of the plant <clears throat> ending in cone-like cone -like structures. They did not produce seed um, like many modern plants. Rather, they were produced by means of elaborate encapsulated spores. It has been estimated the, the Lepidodendron grew fairly rapidly and lived between 10 to 15 years. It is also believed that this tree was monocarpic, which means they produced only once toward the end of their life. These fossil impressions were formed as the parts of the tree <coughs> was buried under tons of sedimentary um, of sediments during the fossilization, fossilization process. Literally, they were crushed flat as a board. The fossil impressions I find here in Saginaw appeal to me on several levels, one being I love books, and shale being a sedimentary rock, um, when you open the, the layers apart, it's like opening the layers of a very, very ancient volume. As already stated, the Lepidodendron is famous for the unmistakable scale-like bark. 
The plant was anchored at the base not um, by a deep root system, but by several shallow running Y-shaped branches called stigmaria. These can be seen in this photograph of a large specimen that I found here in Saginaw. The upper branches at the top of the plant terminated in a cigar-shaped cone called the Lepidost robus. Well, thanks for taking a look and listen. My next fossil video will be about um, something quite different, but that lived on the trees. It will be about an interesting little fossil caterpillar that I also found in the red shales of ancient Saginaw.